Prophets in Our Midst by Timothy Stunt. There are two very elusive men about whom I'd like to know a great deal more than I'm currently able to find. They both lived sometime in the last 150 years. The first was a French-speaking trapeze artist who I believe came from Canada. It seems he wore some sort of tight-fitting garment during his performances. His name? Jules Léotard. 1830-1870. The second man was English, a quiet engineer of decidedly practical turn of mind. His designs appeared to have been the ones from which the engine block and car motors evolved. He also invented the metal shield which covers the greasy chain on bicycles, a simple device designed to prevent the cyclist's trousers or skirts from getting either dirty or entangled in the chain. His name? John Carter. The curious thing is that if you look in a French dictionary, there's no such word as leotard to describe the tights worn by gymnasts, even though Monsieur Leotard was a man of French-speaking origins. On the other hand, there is a French word, carter, which means either the chain guard of a bicycle or a variety of parts in a motor car, so that, for example, the sump is referred to as le fond de carter. Ironically, you will find the word leotard in the English dictionary, which in turn has no entry for carter. Indeed, Mr. Carter gets no mention in the Dictionary of National Biography, which to my mind is rather rough when his name is almost a household word on the other side of the channel. As is so often the case, men are commemorated in countries other than their own, where they are prophets without honor. It is rather hard to say why this happens. Either it's because we know or we think we know so much about our friends and acquaintances that we fail to recognize their greatness. Or it's because, in fact, we know too little about them. Think for a moment of your companions here. How often we think of our fellow students as they were a year or two ago. We remember something they did when they were younger and less experienced, or we failed to recognize the qualities they now have. Or alternatively, think of those many students whose names you know and who are your neighbors, but about whom you know nothing more. This time last week I was helping to get the half-term exhibition organized. It's not a very encouraging thing to have to do because it involves persuading a lot of people to find a variety of objects, painting, knitting, pottery, photographs, projects, essays, and so on. They resent having to do this, and many people ask why we have to put this sort of display on at all. We hear the same complaint that the school is being very hypocritical in doing this for the parents and that it's not worth all the time and energy, all of which irritates me not a little. After all, there's nothing hypocritical about trying to present the life of the school in such a way that parents and visitors can get some idea in the course of a few hours what it's like. More important, however, is the fact that it is good for us to see the work of each other in contexts about which we know very little. Even if no parents came, this would be good for me to see the paintings on the walls, the gymnastic prowess of students on the trampoline, the pots and baskets made in the crafts room, that student whom I see only occasionally in the corridor, it was quite a surprise to see him leaping over the box in the gym. Or that other boy who I always think of just a fourth former, now I know he can sing very well as he did in the production of Joseph. And then there is that girl who never see, does very well in my history classes. Now I've seen her pottery. I realize there's another side about her which I was totally 
ignorant. What I find stimulating about community life is that we are all so different and our gifts are so different. We are changing all the time. Revising our opinions, discovering new fields of endeavor, responding to new acquaintances and new ideas. The more I look around me, the more I am certain that the myth of the mold or stereotype of our school is nothing more than that, a myth.